Morning everyone. How you doing? Back again at the boat. Let's uh let's set about this uh this battening again. Come on. Just thought I'd give you a view of uh of the morning. I mean I know there ain't a lot to see here, it ain't the prettiest of sights, but here we go. There's our boaty. See how foggy it is, but look how the season's changing now. Beautiful. Still cold, but it's looking more like spring every day. Just finishing a brew off again. I think that's all you think I do is drink tea. But uh, I just want to bring you, bring you in on this one. So you can probably see I'm just about to start putting the uh, the roof battens down. I've already got a, obviously every 600, there's a brace on the roof, so I can drill into that. So I'm gonna put a batten right down the middle and then one around here and then one around here, sort of split the difference. Uh, obviously to carry the, the timber that we're gonna put on the roof. We're just gonna put a sheet material on the roof uh, some sort of matchboard, tongue and groove effect, uh, ply or even a moisture resistant MDF. We'll see, I ain't really decided, but I know it's gonna be a sheet of something. Uh, the cabling for the boat's gonna go down the middle, obviously around the mushroom vents. I've gotta cut those out yet. Uh, if you were having tongue and groove, you'd probably wanna put your batten in across the boat so it carries the planks or or you'd have to put a sheet of, uh, of ply on uh, if you choose to go down the boat with your battens you put a sheet of ply on and then you could still bond and screw your tongue and groove lengths um, as normal but uh, right, I'm just going to use sheet and in fact my sheet's only going to come to about here and then another piece from there to the side of the boat and then the middle because I'm going to leave it at I want access to the cabling you see uh, so I'm going to just box in the cabling which a lot of uh, a lot of boat builders do that you know they they put the cabling down the middle or even down each side and there's nothing wrong with either method it's whatever suits your boat really uh, but in my case, I want to put mine down the middle because I've got a fair good, fairly good head height. Uh, so I'm going to put it down the middle, and it ain't going to, it ain't going to hang down too low anyway. So uh, that's what I've chosen to do. Uh, just thought I'd bring you in on it. So uh, keep watching. I'll put you on time lapse because there's only so much drilling and screwing anybody needs to see. So I'll do the first few, and then I'll put you on time lapse, and then obviously you'll see you progressing. Cheers. seat so I've got a bit of it done now I'm just going to swap over so I'm going to get everything from there put it over the other side and then we'll, uh, we'll get the other one down hey guys how are you doing just thought I'd uh, just thought I'd bring you in now quickly on the on the day's progress so uh, you can probably see that all about now I'll just let me just spin you around Actually, no, I can't spin you around. But you can probably see that uh, all the buttons are in on the roof. Right to the back as well. I sprayed a little bit of uh, bit of insulation just on the steel bearers there. I'll just trim that off uh, 
well I say as soon as it's dry but it don't take long to set to be fair so uh, that's where we are it's all looking pretty good okay so what we're going to do is fasten these obviously to here I've cut them so they just finish smack on level with the bottom of the gunnel just like that now what I've got to do now is cut a little piece of timber just to, to go underneath here I'm screwing and gluing that I'll show you that in just a sec though so let me get a pencil and I'll cut a couple off <coughs> there we go just an off cut and then all I'm doing all I'm doing is obviously just offering that up to there just because each one is a little bit different marking it with a pencil and then because this tapers slightly there's a slight angle on it I'm just cutting I'm just cutting these at a slight angle as well so rather than cutting them at 90 degrees I'm just cutting them at a little bit of an angle just to match the match the taper of the boat. And again, just a little bit of an angle, just a little bit of a taper. Beautiful. Now what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of wood glue. So this is waterproof, waterproof wood glue. So again, just pop a little bit on the end there. Just uh, again, just my belt and braces approach. Uh, you could use lumberjack for this, some lumberjack <laughs> polyurethane, but this is uh, this is just waterproof glue as well. So. Does the job just fine? Okay, just want to make sure we screw it on the right way. So let's pop him on. There we go. Okay, we get the screwdriver. <coughs> screws, nothing massive, 65 mil. I'm just popping a couple of screws in as well. Just to keep that joint nice and tight. Like I say, this ain't the best cabinetry. No one's ever gonna see it once it's covered up, but of course we do want we do want it to last, so that's good and firm. But all I'm doing is popping that on there now. Yeah. So that's that. Fit under there nicely. A little bit of glue on there now. So we're gonna glue and screw that as well, so we just pop a little bit on there. And again, a little bit on the bottom of it. There we go. Okay, so that's the batten prepared. Let's get out of the wipe off. Nice wipe off. And then what we're going to do again is use some high strength adhesive. Couple of mobs on there. And then glue on the bottom, glue on there. Now I know there's a there's a load of different approaches you could do. You could uh, you could do this so many different ways. 
This is just my way. Uh, but like I say, you could do it. There's multiple ways you could do it. Some people put them across. Nothing wrong with that. Only about 25 more to do. Right, I'm going to just pop a screw in there. So, all I'm doing now is just drilling pilot in there, cut the pilot, cut the screws, and then with a bit of, a bit of a glue adhesive on there, of course, like we said. I ain't saying this is the quickest way, it's going to take me quite a while, but that's the way I wanted to do it. I say putting horizontal buttons down I think would be quicker, um, but uh, this is the method I wanted to use, purely for cable routing more than anything. So I'm getting my cables down where I want them to be, rather than having to go weave in and out of the buttons. But like I say, I ain't saying this is the right way, but <coughs> it's our way. and. I'm sure you'll do it your way. show you this you'll probably see uh, probably see now that what I've done I've put a batten all the way down the boat now every every brace has got a batten strap to it there's a few ways of doing this um, you probably if you watch other boat videos some people put their battens <clears throat> all the way down the boat sort of horizontally so they'll have one here one at the bottom and one in the middle and obviously they fix their panelling to that uh, I've chosen not to do that and there's nothing wrong with going horizontally I mean you know there's more ways than one to skin the cat I've chose to go vertically with mine purely because uh, it's going to help me with my wire in the way I'm going to wire uh, the way I'm going to run my ring main uh, so there's no right or wrong way but, uh, but of course I just thought I'd show you the way that I've done it. Obviously I've put a little brace across here, screwed it into here. This will carry the bottom of the gunnel uh, panelling. Uh, and of course some people what they do they actually put another block on and they use this as a cable tray uh, to run their cabling. My cabling's not going under here, I'm going to put mine up on the roof uh, down the centre of the boat, there'll be more of that to come as we as we progress but 
As you can see, I've infilled now in between each brace. But of course, what it leaves me is this little void at the back, um, which is bare steel. And of course, we don't really want to leave any bare steel exposed. Of course, it's vulnerable to, to condensation. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a little bit of spray foam. Again, a closed cell spray foam. We're just going to pump a little bit in. I'm going to do this left-handed, hopefully, so you can so you can see it. Uh, I'll just uh, just tip the camera down just to touch. So there we go, a little bit better. I think. Okay, and all we're going to do down this seam, we're just going to pump a little bit of spray foam just to just to seal it and stop any moisture. So I'll do this left-handed, uh, and again, you don't want to you'll, you don't want to spray too much in because it expands quite quite a bit. See? A little bit down the bottom, probably start down the bottom, work your way up. See, filling up. Hope you saw that. Let's do another one. Again, nice and gentle on the trigger. And just fill it up. And that seals that edge. And it also, of course, helps to hold the, 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 the insulation back. But like I say, I, I, I dabbed mine on with just a little bit of silicon pushed it on. If you're wondering, this is 25 mil thick. Uh, typically that's what spray foam, when, when it's spray foamed, uh, <coughs> when the boat gets spray foamed, so uh, in the conventional method, you know, where uh, the boat yard do it, uh, then it's about 20, 25 mil thick. So it's sort of about the similar sort of depth of insulation. Of course you can go as thick as you like, you know, you can go. Uh, you can go for 50 mil or 100 mil. I mean, I wouldn't suggest you go 100 mil. You'll have no boat space left. But some people choose to go 50 mil. I don't know whether there's any need for that really. Uh, again, it's down to personal preference. I've stuck with 25 uh, purely because that's the sort of typical depths you get when it's actually. And it's physically sprayed uh, so it's sort of comparable with it. hey guys just uh, just a recap on the day's day's work so as you can see battened most of uh, well all of underneath the gunnels has been battened now uh, insulated you can see I've sprayed a little bit of foam on the steel the steel angle line that was going down the length of the boat obviously the roof's done now as you can see uh, so making progress now, there's only a little bit more to do now, just the bulkheads either end, and that's it. Hey, morning everyone. Oh, thanks for joining me again on the boat. Weather ain't too bad, it's a little bit murky, but it ain't freezing cold, which is always a bonus. So what we're going to do today, most of the boat now is lined out, so the ceiling's lined out, all down the sides are lined out, both sides of course. Floors ballasted and insulated, all the plies down. And all I've got to do now is, uh, well all I've got to do, but the next job of course is to get the bulkheads front and back. Front and back ply lined and insulated, so I'm going to set about that today. And then also uh, I bought some conduit, flexible conduit ready for the cables to uh, start to be run to be first fixed so uh, looking forward to doing that <clears throat> but of course first of all let's get these timbers cut and get some insulation in I'm going to use 50 mil on the ends because what the engines behind here or it will be so uh, what I want to do I'm going to put some 50 mil insulation on here just in the, an attempt to try and keep some of the uh, some of the noise down uh, 
uh, and of course it would give us a little bit more um, or keep a bit more warmth in the boat as well so that's where we are let's crack on with that then hey guys so snuck these frames up just uh, quickly obviously you can see there's quite a bit of angled quite a few angled cuts on there I just thought I'd show you uh, for those of you who don't know hang on I mean it ain't rocket science really but for those of you who don't know it's a bevel so obviously it's adjustable so just a quick quick method of finding angles so obviously if you need to know what this angle is, I hope you can see there, you just under your bevel and set it to the angle that you want. Okay, and then of course that angle's now set and you can cut, cut the ends of your timber off, i.e. like that, with your bevel. Just thought I'd bring you in on that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna screw this frame together now. Screw it together. Clean all the face off. Get some construction adhesive and bond it back to the uh, to the steelwork, and again put some pins through through the timber laths, where I can get to. And a few screws through the side here, and then ink filled with insulation. You might be able to see how I've done that one. I'm just going to do exactly the same with, with this one. There you go guys, it's the back insulated and battened out, in fact all the boat now is completely insulated and battened out, show you down the front bit, ok obviously the doors are still going to be yet but there we go all insulated water tanks got to go in next but I've got to insulate the floor so that's the next job is get underneath the bow insulated and uh, then I can get the water tank fitted and then of course we can start getting the getting the first fixed lighting and the circuits in there's a bit of cotton do it ready to go so there you go 